Hey, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life, is back. Michelle, how you been? Great. How are you? I'm doing okay. We've both been doing some traveling. I guess uh, Lutherans for Life just did a, a national conference. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in Rock Island, Illinois, it was a great gathering opportunity to, to meet a lot of people and uh, to get energized about uh, sharing the message of life with others. That's so awesome. I'm really glad that you guys got the chance to get together again. I, I know at conferences too, it's just, it's a reunion of sorts for us. Um, and it, it's just, it, there, there's, we're the body of Christ and, and there's something that happens when we're actually in the same room. Um, yeah. Podcasts are great, but uh, you know. Yeah. If there's something wonderful about being in a room of over 200 people, you know, and, and to know that this is, this is extended family. This is family that God's provided for us um, and, and to rejoice in that family. So Absolutely. yeah, it was a wonderful That's time. Awesome. I'm glad. So we're back. And I guess we had a, a little bit of playing time so we can we can waste time on TikTok. So let's talk about <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, life issues on the TikTok feed. What do you got for us? Yeah. So there's been a lot of life issues coming out, a lot of videos. But what I want to talk about today are kind of two different videos that show us opposite views of the topic of abortion. And um, and I want to start with uh, Taylor Swift. Which <laughs> it's kind of an odd place to start when we're talking about. Know. It's dropped. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So, so she she just uh, dropped a song a couple of weeks ago called "Bigger Than the Sky," and it's been getting a lot of a lot of commentary on TikTok, a lot of speculation as to what what she means um, by the lyrics in her song, and a lot of people are coming to the conclusion uh, that it's not just a song about loss but it's a song about the loss of a pregnancy, uh, the loss of a child um, through, uh, we, we would assume natural, natural means, right? So um, a miscarriage of sorts, and, and she's mourning that loss. Um, now, again, it could be about loss, about anything. There's obviously elements of grief, but a lot of women have listened to this song, women who have experienced miscarriages and, um, and are responding in very powerful ways on, on TikTok. Um, they're showing their reactions to the song. They're um, creating mementos um, or, or talking about um, mementos for the children that they lost or talking about the reality of the grieving that they have gone through uh, when they've experienced this miscarriage. In fact, some of the women are just now going through that grieving. So it's a miscarriage that happened a while ago and, um, and they did not, they did not feel that they either had the time, had the ability to grieve because it was such a young life or um, that they, they were uh, given permission to grieve. And so this song has, has, I think, opened up the discussion about miscarriage and the, and the discussion about um, how, how, traumatic that experience is and how much we need to talk through that because uh, the truth is um, the life that was lost was a life. It was a life um, in most cases desired and, and planned for or at least um, someone was excited about when they found out. But even in those surprise pregnancies, it was still a life and one that they were rejoicing over. Um, and so so I, I think this is what a great opportunity for us as for life people to, to address this um, topic, to, to really um, uphold the lives of those who have experienced miscarriage or, or loss um, of, of a, a baby before it is born, um, but also to realize that the words that we use uh, and the phrases that we use um, can be we can choose phrases and words that are uplifting, right? So to say, well, at least the baby didn't live long um, isn't, isn't the comforting response, right? Uh, <laughs> the comforting response is, is uh, focused on this baby. I'm so sorry that this baby is lost to you and I will continue to pray for you uh, and, and um, to, to pray that this baby, that you were able to meet this baby uh, in heaven someday. So right. it's just opened up lots of opportunities. 
And I think it's important. Um, one of the, the things I, I love about getting to talk with you is there's always sort of the gospel underneath all of these topics. Um, this isn't this isn't sort of the opportunity then to, to point out flaws in somebody's argument, but to recognize that there are people who are hurting and don't always have the words to express it or even sometimes the permission. I know um, my wife and I have, have had two miscarriages um, and so sorry. It, it's, it's a place where um, you, you almost feel at odds with traditional funerals because the life was so small um, and, and, and so young. Um, but to talk about it though, for us, um, people just, they came out of the woodwork, they shared their own stories. We, we found hope in the idea that faith does come by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ, that even in the womb, these children can hear the word of God. And so this isn't a place to have an argument, but a place to actually share the gospel that offers comfort to those who are grieving. And thanks be to God that, that our Lord would meet us even in, in these dark days. That's right. And we need that closure. We need the opportunity to be able to say this was a life, a life that we lost and a life that God, God has redeemed, that God created and redeemed and, and, and a life that, that we will see again. Um, I think for parents struggling, like you said, it's such a small, a, a, a young life. Right, and so we even funerals. We don't often have funerals for miscarriages um, because we don't even necessarily have the the ability to to see what this life looks like uh, if it is very small. And um, and so part of the grieving process is being able to say goodbye, being able to put um, that child uh, into the ground, to commit that child to uh, God Himself. And, and we're missing some of those elements. And so this is where the, um, the Christian community really can come in and provide uh, that support system and, and help uh, with that, that closure and to remind parents of the hope that they have. So um, it, because of Christ, because of the promises of God. Um, but yeah, we have this wonderful opportunity to do that. And, and what you know, how powerful too, that um, God is at work even through Taylor Swift's song <laughs> to, to remind us that these, that life is important and, and to remind us of our call, our vocations to uphold the lives of others in our communities and, and to affirm their grief and offer a word of hope. Absolutely. So. Yeah, that's great. Um, so, so there's a, a place to spread a little bit of positivity on the internet, and, and God knows it needs it. Uh, the other stuff that's going on on TikTok is is usually, well, a little less wholesome. You're telling me about. One. <laughs> yeah. So on the other opposite of the side of the spectrum, on the on the opposite side of the spectrum, we have some TikTok videos that are focusing on uh, what they're calling papaya abortions. Now this isn't something that's new. I did a little research and apparently they've been happening since around 2005. Um, so relatively new, right? When we look at, at the history of the world and yet, um, and, and yet we see that um, again, unfortunately because of our sinful nature and, and because of our desire to do uh, dark deeds, um, we, we have this, We've used this fruit as an opportunity to um, practice abortions, and um, and right now it's being portrayed as a very positive way to affirm um, doctors who are going out into the field, um, a, a way to get around um, maybe the the laws and and the um, stipulations that would prevent actual abortions from happening. Uh, as as doctors are preparing for for their career, and so you know, so we have on the one hand this grieving over the loss of life, and we have on the other a celebration and and a uh, of the loss of life, um, and how you know a, a praising uh, for for how abortions are done so well on on papayas, and look, they're getting all of this experience. Um, but let's be real, a papaya is not a uterus. The seeds from a papaya are not babies. Um, and, and what we're talking about here is a, a life issues that, that's very, very serious with lots of consequences. We have the grieving over here of, of people who have lost children, but, but let's also be honest that the people who experience abortions also go through and studies show this grieving as well, whether that happens now or whether that happens 40 years from now, um, we, we have the loss of life. 
And uh, that shouldn't be um, treated in a flippant way. It shouldn't be treated in a in a uh, a fun let's 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 rejoice over the fact that we found a way around this law uh, to train doctors. Um, but it should be treated with with all seriousness that that this these that abortions not only cause a death um, and potentially more than one death but they also have long-term traumatic consequences for women. So, yeah. It's, it's one of those things that uh, we do when we're afraid of something is, is we try and dehumanize it and we try and laugh at it. Um, yeah. And this, this, this sort of trend on TikTok, um, it, it's a place where we try and take away the impact of what's actually happening because it, it makes it easier to confront. We, we make jokes about it because we, we laugh at the things that we can't control because then we, we can at least pretend that we can. Um, it, it's, it's a chance to talk about fear. It, it's a chance to talk about what it is to, to confront something that is, is bigger than you um, terrifying because it is a complete lack of control. Uh, for us, this is not just a, a conversation about making the right choice, although we, we yeah. stand by this. At the same time, it, it's a promise that, that God is with those who, who have been sinned against. It's God who is with those who are sinners. And it's, it's God who promises never to leave us nor forsake us, even as we, we go through dark and awful things. Uh, so for both those who are, are afraid of what might come and their trying to work themselves up to to having an abortion to to those who who have had one and, and they're just trying not to think about it as a life uh but sooner or later that that conscience rears its head we get to talk about then the hope that is christ who is crucified and, and the promises that god makes to sustain us that's right first peter three fifteen tells us to always be prepared to give an answer to the question uh to be prepared to give an answer to, to those who would ask you for the hope that you have and I'm totally messing that up. I have no, that memorized no. and I'm totally messing it up. But, but to be prepared to give an answer to the question uh, for the hope that you have. Um, in any way, that, that answer, that answer is one of grace. Uh, that answer is one of light and life. Um, that answer is found in Christ and, and the renewing of, of life, the forgiveness of sins, the hope to come despite despite this world. Um, and, and you mentioned you know, that idea of, of darkness and, and we've been talking about it. Um, our sinful flesh longs for the darkness. It leans away from the sun, from Christ himself. And um, you know, as we enter into winter and we, we know that the, that the earth is tilting away from the sun and, and in well, the Northern hemisphere and we see, we see death and we see, we see that coolness we're reminded, I think the seasons can, can help us remember this, this reality, that we too um, are tempted to, to lean away, that darkness is also in our life, and yet the answer is, is God's word and God's sacraments, which pull us back toward him, which give us the light and life that he has promised, and, um, and, and this is the answer to the world's problems. This is the answer to life issues. It is an answer that is filled with grace. Michelle Bauman is the director of, of Why for Life. Uh, there is some positivity on TikTok. You can follow higher things on TikTok, but Why for Life's out there too. What's your handle? Yeah, so LFL Why for Life, uh, that's our handle. And let's just give uh, higher things another plug. If you want to talk about trauma and you want to talk about how to address trauma, join us in a couple of weeks at Chats for Life because you will be there to talk about that with us um, and, and how, um, you know, how we can address that from, again, a gospel-motivated, life-affirming voice. I'm looking forward to it. That's, uh, that's November 3rd, right? Yes. Yes. Can't very wait. soon. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Michelle. Hope you have a great day. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.